It doesn't look anything like a building, but the architect who came up with this is hoping to inspire new ones. Canadian Philip Beasley will be taking his vision to Venice to the world's top architecture event. The CBC's Yelena Adzik paid him a visit as he prepares for Europe. On this quiet Toronto street, in this normal looking house, the future of architecture is under construction. And if Philip Beasley is right, we'll never look at a building the same way again. This is an idea for a responsive architecture that surrounds you and that, that knows that you're there and even starts to care about you. Oh, I'm a little afraid. Should I be afraid? Maybe just a little bit afraid. Mostly it's very kind, actually. Beasley calls his experimental work Hylozoic Ground for the ancient belief that all matter has life. When I look here and I touch one of these little bits and pieces and it moves, it's alive. What are the individual sort of feather-like structures responding to? My body heat? My baby? What, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> well, there are space sensors that are all riddled all through this environment. And then here, we can see this Woo! rising out like that. They okay. do like the baby. That's right. This structure may be built from laser-cut plastic, wire, and computer chips. But it trembles and chirps and responds as if it's alive. By design, it's both beautiful and a bit creepy. The camera won't be able to pick this up, but there's a bit of a, sometimes a crackling sound or almost, ah, it's, it just touched my arm. Sorry. A bit of a, an insect-like sound. These are very small motions controlled by individual microprocessors, and these are linked together a little bit like a coral reef and polyps would be linked together, okay. or perhaps a swarm of insects. This is an idea for an intelligent building of the future. A lot of people would look at this and say, it's art. How is this architecture? Well, it's really a crossover between art and architecture. Um, because on one hand, we like to think about possibility. We're actually trying to imagine how buildings could live and breathe and care. And just how could a building care about you? Well, imagine a structure that could sense and respond to your individual needs when it comes to temperature, airflow, or even your mood. Perhaps giving you a boost through a change in sound or color should you feel blue. We really care about delivering this. This isn't just science fiction. But it's not that a building would necessarily look like this installation, rather that its technology and materials could be used in future designs. For example, these tiny flasks hold specially engineered cells that can generate new stone-like layers, allowing a building to repair itself. Beasley says his design will lead to more energy efficient and even energy producing buildings with less material waste. We care deeply about carbon counting. We're trying to measure the impact of this. We're trying to see how it performs. These samples in Beasley's studio are only a small portion of what will be shown at the Venice Biennale of Architecture, the world's top architecture event. It was selected to represent Canada by a jury who praised its architectural experimentation. It's quite an honor, although now the challenge is to transport hundreds of thousands of these delicate pieces. But the man has a plan. We pack them flat and then we expand them out by clip, clipping them together, kind of like a, like a mesh work. So it's a bit like Ikea. <laughs> Will I ever be able to purchase this in Ikea? Well, I kind of hope so, actually. <laughs> Whether Beasley's dream of revolutionizing mainstream architecture ever comes to life, at least his creation will snap to life in Venice. The Biennale opens at the end of August. Yelena joins us in studio. That is totally cool. It's really neat. Well, listen, it's not just pie in the sky. Susan, there really is an application happening right now. The Crown Paint Company, based in the UK, they are creating an entirely new type of paint based on Beasley's arc, uh, based on his technology, rather. So imagine a building, your house, for example. You paint it. The paint captures carbon. So right away, that's good for the environment. But then it takes it a step further, and it converts itself into a thin stone-like layer, kind of like granite, which means that your house is better heated, it can also withstand the elements, and it's just overall, it's great for the environment. So it's a stronger home, and that's all because of a paint, and it, they say it'll be available within a year for you to buy. A year. I like the bit about taking care of me, though. Changing my mood, <laughs> things yeah. like that. It's good to be put all in right. a good mood by building, for sure. Thank you, Yelena. Thanks, Susan. CBC's Yelena Adzik. Well, last month shattered a world record. Can you guess what it is? Here's another clue. Claire Martin is coming up with the weather. That's next on The National.